first question, have the two of y'all ever done a panel together before? No. No, we haven't. We, fir we, ha we first met um, in San, Diego in San Diego last Diego. year, yeah. Yeah, at San Diego Comic-Con last year for uh, signings through IDW for the X-Files comic. Yeah. That would make sense. Yes. But okay, but this is the first official JJ and Joe Harris panel. So we are making stuff happen here at X-Fest. Sure. If it's successful, we're going to take it on the road. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to take notes on what works and what doesn't. <laughs> okay, so I guess like just to get things started, when did you guys become fans of the X-Files? Go oh god, I think uh, when the pilot aired yeah, I mean, I was right in that demographic. Uh, nerdy teenager on a Friday night, new network. Um, so I've been a fan since the early 90s. So when I got the gig writing the X-Files comic, um, they were like, are you interested? I said, uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's one of the, the crown jewel franchises. So um, I've been a fan forever. And just to, you know, to, to, to kind of contribute to this small slice of of, uh, of 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 the fandom and the the, the franchise is just a, a pleasure and an honor what about you he's so modest a small slice <laughs> it is a small <laughs> slice I, mean. uh, I um yeah i i jumped on i was i was a little younger when the sh the show debuted but my first memory of it i was um I was having a sleepover with a buddy, and I was over at his house, and he had fallen asleep already. And so I was in his living room, and I was flipping through his little TV, and then I just see this image on the screen of this hallway on fire, and this uh, person standing in the middle, and we all know what episode that is. Uh -huh. It's fire, yes. So that was, I was sort of entranced by that as a kid, and I watched the rest of the episode, and then I managed to figure out what the show was, and it was The X-Files. And so... I caught the reruns that summer and then kept up with it throughout the entire run. And I was one of those kids that just had, like, had to buy blank VHS tapes so that I could tape every episode. And then I would really like test my, my ability to stop the recording for the commercial. And then oh. you get really good at predicting when the show's going to come back yeah. on because you got to save that room on the tape because you're really trying to fit six episodes on the extent of it. You all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So... This became a lot about blank tapes, but that's how I started <laughs> that's okay. to watch the X Files. What kind of tape was it? Uh, whatever was the cheapest. Uh, I was I was not going for quality. I was going okay. for quantity. <laughs> Out of curiosity, um, who is your favorite monster of the week? Oh, uh, Fluke Man, for sure. We we did a sequel uh, early on in my comics run because I really really that was a point of order I really wanted to make. So yeah, the host. Um, I, my, my, there's so many. I guess my first thought was Tombs, um, because they, he, twice in one season we in get to see that season. guy. Yeah. And, and then the never first again. Monster. Right, never again. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you crush a guy in an escalator, um, <laughs> spoilers, I'm sorry, spoilers. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that. And that was one of the first <laughs> posters that I worked on was the poster for Squeeze. And so that's, yeah, I have it. He has a special place in my, in my heart. Well, let's, let's talk about your posters. So from what I've researched, it was something that you were initially only going to be doing for a short while, and then it expanded into now what it has become, which is, what, over 200 of them? Yes. So, yeah, I've done, I've done a poster for every episode of the show, um, and there's, the show ran for a long time. So that's a lot of posters. I, I just started it as a fan project. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we have a lot of fan artists at the convention. If you're anybody a fan artist here? Yes, I see some, some tentative hands going up. Um, and so I've always loved the X-Files, so uh, we're, uh, there's this thing called Inktober that a lot of artists will do. And so over the course of October, it's sort of a challenge for yourself to create a piece of art every day. So 31 pieces of art in a row. And I decided that instead of doing like a little ink drawing, I would, oh, I'll create a full one sheet theatrical poster for my favorite episodes of the X-Files. And so I did that for 31 days in a row, um, and it caught on, which was pretty cool. And then I sort of continued doing them on a regular basis and posting them online. I just had a Tumblr back then. And eventually, folks at Fox noticed, and they said, hey, these are, these are good. We like them. Do you want to do them officially for us? And I said, no. No, I said, of course. I said, <laughs> said yes. And so that was, um, yeah, that was a big break in my, in my uh, career as an artist. So has there been a poster that you feel has maybe been the most popular 
or is that tough to say? No, there, yeah, I, people love my Arcadia poster. Um, and I just saw some people okay. go, there's an Arcadia poster? Um, yes, it's, it's sold out a couple of times. The, the tough thing about these, uh, you know, there's like this whole industry for limited edition prints. And for them to be limited edition, you have to limit the edition. Um, and there are a lot of X-Files fans out there that, that want these posters. Um, so we're trying, you know, I, I'm trying to get as many out as I can. But Arcadia, I think, is it's definitely a really popular one, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so Joe, my question for you is, what direction were you given from Chris Carter when it came to creating the comics? Uh, well, we started without him involved at all, which was really weird. Um, but I didn't have any say in the matter. Uh, Fox wanted to do it, IDW, the publisher, had the license. Um, they liked the pitch that I had come up with, and it was after that pitch got everyone uh, interested that Chris Carter sort of materialized. I guess someone had gotten him word that the studio was licensing uh, the comics, and he wanted to be involved, and uh, we were all you know, incredibly excited about that. The, honestly, he, he really liked what I was doing. He just begged me off. Um, uh, uh, he, he didn't want me to deal with William, oh. Scully's baby at that time, and which in retrospect I was grateful for because it gave us, uh, I had to come up with a new big bad for season 10 who ended up being Gibson Praise, which I was really fond of. So, um, But that was the extent of it. You know, he was really supportive. He's been pretty generous with his... Uh, He's dropped uh, mentions of the comics in my name in various occasions, and it's been really um, flattering. And yeah, I'm just really grateful to, to, to him, like I'm grateful to George Lucas, so. Okay, well now you have to tell us about George Lucas. Oh, I've never met George Lucas, so. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. So, okay, before we open this up for fan questions, obviously we're here at X-Fest, and um, we're all fans of the X-Files, but I want to know, outside of the X-Files, what are you guys fans of? Oh, God, I mean, Comics in general, um, Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, what am I watching now on TV? I just watched the Deadwood movie last week and was in seventh heaven over it. Um, I'm a sports fan. I'm a I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm uh, uh, I'm a Led Zeppelin fan. So. Yeah, that's right. okay. <laughs> I I could repeat everything he just said because um, it's all true. Yeah, I, I'm just a nerd through and through. Um, so yeah, Star Trek, Star Wars, and I've been so fortunate that I've, I get to create official artwork for a lot of these franchises, which is really awesome, and create, you know, add my own little slice to, to that. Um, I don't know, we're, we're almost done with Battlestar Galactica. We're, we're making our way through that show. Um, yes, some Battlestar fans out there. I'm a huge fan of Quantum Leap. Um, oh, I love Quantum Leap, yeah. If, if I had my way, I'd be doing posters for Quantum Leap as well, but I don't know if any, anybody would want to buy those. Uh, yeah, a couple it's people. A it's a real deep cut, but that show, I, I really like that show. That show holds sure. up. Um, and Sliders is another show that I love from. It's a, be it's a better show in theory than it is in execution, but I do really like that show a lot. So, we do have a microphone that's located right up here, so whatever questions you guys may have for JJ and Joe, now's your opportunity. I don't think anything's too off limits here today. Anything that we want to stray away from? Okay. I, no. Any willing victims, volunteers? All right. Oh, cool. It'd be really awkward if we just stared at each oh, other. Oh, no, I, I would talk to you guys. <laughs> okay. I, I promise. I gotcha. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my question, first for JJ, uh, you're doing the Star Trek posters, and I am big in the Star Trek fandom. Is there an episode of Deep Space Nine that you would love to do? So, um, for, for those that don't know, I, I am going through the episodes of Deep Space Nine, and I'm doing episode posters for those right now. Um, and so I've done a lot of the ones that I like already. Uh, one of my favorite episodes is The Visitor. If anybody is a DS9 fan, it's a really great episode. It's from season four, episode two. I get to memorize all this stuff because I do all these posters. <laughs> yeah, I, re I, I was really happy to work on that. And I'm looking forward to doing more from later in the show's run, too. Because the show Far gets Beyond so the Stars? Ep yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Paper Moon. And yeah, there's a lot of really good ones that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And my question for Joe, I know you've done a lot of um, rock and roll inspired comics in addition to X-Files. If there was anything that you wanted to do that you haven't done yet? 
Uh, wow. Um, I like doing music comics, so I'd be up for uh, doing, I'm actually working on a couple of different things that I can't talk about, but I, I like the idea of working with artists um, and coming up with something cool that their fans like. So um, I guess I would love to do a, some kind of authorized Led Zeppelin thing. That'd be fantastic. Um, I've actually never written Kiss, which is weird because Kiss has been all over the comic book industry. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Zeppelin. But uh, honestly, I, I, I like the idea of bringing rock and roll to comics. It's a, it, there's, there's a tradition of it. Sometimes it's very uh, sort of a, a ground level based, you know, in punk rock, kind of very DIY. But there is a tradition of it in comics, and I'm, I, I, I just enjoy contributing to that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We still have time for more questions, but while we're waiting for the next willing victim, oh, okay, I'll let you go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I just, JJ, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago in Twitter Hitchcock's influence. Yes. On your posters, one which I could see very clearly. Uh, I was wondering what other influences you might have. So um, I, well, I love Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. I, I, I love his style. I love, and I love the artists that he worked with on his posters. And if you know my stuff, you know that I like Saul Bass. Um, Saul Bass was a genius. For those unfamiliar with Saul Bass, um, he, you could consider him a minimalist artist, but he did a lot of very famous movie posters from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, the poster for Vertigo might be one of his better known ones. Um, so he had a real talent for uh, taking uh, the core of a subject and boiling it down to a very simple visual which is something that I really do try and keep in mind when I'm creating my work. It's one of those things where, I mean, you can have a lot of influences and you don't, you don't for me, I don't want to become an artist that's just sort of doing a Saul Bass. I want to infuse my own style and my own creativity in there, but these are things that are sort of in the back of your mind and they sort of build up the kind of artist that you want to be. So in terms of poster artists, Saul Bass, um, Bob Peak is an amazing poster artist. Um, he did, most of the uh, theatrical Star Trek movie posters. Drew Struzan, obviously, um, who, if, if you saw a movie in the 1980s and it had a cool poster, he's the guy who designed it. Um, and there are a lot of you know contemporary guys working right now that I think are amazing. Um, Paul Shipper and Matt Ferguson. And you know, part of being in that world is trying to keep up on what other people are doing. Um, because you, you, it helps you up your game because you're like, okay, here, here are the other people working in the industry. But in terms of filmmakers, I'm, a, I'm just a huge film buff um, through and through. So, you know, Hitchcock, Kurosawa, um, Fellini. Um, I'm, I'm a big foreign film fan. I love silent films. I love German expressionist films. So I'm a big Fritz Lang fan. So all that stuff and all that stuff is so visual. And I just, I love when filmmakers remember that film is, is a visual art form. And it's not just two people in a room talking to each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks. Well, to piggyback off of that, what about you, Joe? Who are some of your biggest influences? Oh, God. Um, good question. Uh, probably Stan Lee, Frank Miller, um, Alan Moore, just because these are people growing up who just visualized. Rather, they saw the medium as something that nobody else really did, and they pushed it into a realm that growing up, you're like, wow, I get it. These are the, these are the really good comics. That are not, they're not just the pop culture, which is great, which is fine. I love all sorts of comic books, but the people who push the art form um, are people that I was really fond of growing up. J.M. DeMattius, um, Steven Spielberg movies growing up for sure, um, uh, uh, Martin Scorsese films, uh, Paul Schrader. Uh, there's a whole list of people I could talk about. Hitchcock for sure, Orson Welles. So out of curiosity, um, having a career in the arts, a lot of people would say is pretty difficult. Yes. So what advice would you give to somebody that would like to follow a career in the arts? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> uh, steal your, uh, gird your, what, what's the term? Gird your loins in a way, right? Uh, um, it's, a, it's a tough business. I mean, you're going to get rejected a lot, and that's, you know, even if you're really talented and lucky. Uh, I, I had the good fortune of being... Uh, having some amazing success the first time I ever worked in comics. I kind of got out of school and ended up writing a bunch of things for Marvel. I've written a few uh, horror films and had some really awesome early success, but 
everyone eventually pays dues and there's a, you know, a million people behind you that want to be doing what you're doing no matter where you are in the pecking order. So it's kind of frightening because you could, uh, you know, be pursuing your career and you've got assignments and you've got credits, you haven't yet been paid real money and you're like, can I keep doing this? And all it takes is like one look over your shoulder and you realize there's a whole bunch of people hanging on the mountainside behind you. So it just takes a, you know, if you, if you believe you're talented, um, you go for it. Um, chances are objectively you're not. That's just because there's a lot of people who try to do this that don't. Um, but if you believe in yourself and you are the real deal, um, chances are hard work will get you there. Um, I find that hard work mixed with uh, whatever level of talent you are tends to move the average person farther than the really brilliant person who doesn't work really hard. Uh, so that, that, that's just my advice. Keep, um, keep ingesting genre fiction if you want to work in horror or sci-fi or comics. Um, and keep learning. Don't, uh, don't fall back. You know, have favorites, but be open-minded. And uh, yeah, just get, it's, it's a long, hard slog, but it's awesome not having to go to work in the morning. Agreed. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would say... I would say a lot of the same things, and I would say stay hungry. Like it's 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 really easy when you have a little bit of success to become complacent. Um, but like Joe said, you you turn around and there's a lot of people who are who could be a lot hungrier than you, and who are very talented. Um, and we're living in an era now where if you want to get your stuff out into the world, you can do it in a click, um, which is amazing. Media and, has been democratized. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's amazing in so many ways, but as someone in the industry, it's also kind of scary because you have so much content out there. You have so much competition. So you have to continue pushing yourself and pushing yourself to do your best work. And the only other thing that I would say is that finishing is really important. I have a lot of really talented friends who have a lot of really great ideas and they, this goes for writers as right, well. Yeah, sure. absolutely. I, just like in the creative field, um, when, when, you know, creative people together, get together, a lot of times they'll ask like, what are you working on? What are you working on? What are you working on? And when I am in that situation, I usually ask, what, what did you just finish? What's the thing you just finished? And a lot of times people will go, uh, that's, that's a big, that's a big milestone in anybody's creative life and career is when you start finishing things, when you, you know, you, you, you don't just have those half finished stories in your drawer. It's actually finishing things and learning, you know, what sucked about that and what you're going to do different on the next one. That's a big point in somebody's creative life. Yeah, it's a big moment. And just when you do finish something, it can give you that much of a motivation to keep going. There's a great line from uh, Party Down. There's an aspiring author in that. And um, they're like, well, you've never finished a book. He's like, I've written two books. I've written half of four books. That is two books. Uh, <laughs> which it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> what would you say has been the biggest challenge as far as like um, creating a poster or creating the comic? What was the biggest challenge for you guys? Uh, to be honest, when I got the job, I was terrified because um, I imagined that the X-Files had a rabid fan base um, and I didn't want to fuck it up. And I was, I was nervous about that. I'd never, I'd written for Marvel DC um, to varying degrees of response and, and but I was, I was really nervous about the X-Files and fortunately it worked out. Um, it landed well and people received it well, but I think just finding the voices just... Uh, understanding the, the essence of the characters and sort of where you're going to be examining them and how what the fans know about them feeds into this and trying to do something fresh, trying to make it feel like it's your take on these iconic characters while still feeling very much solidly what the fans who've seen everything would expect. Um, you know, I came, I came to this from a different angle, uh, just as strictly as a fan putting work out there for myself. So the pressure was kind of low. Um, there, there's always a little bit of stress when you're putting your art out into the world and seeing how people are going to react to it. And I was um, amazed, one, that people were reacting positively to what I was doing, and two, that people were reacting at all, that it was getting any <laughs> traction. Um, but within that, like within, within the poster project I did, you know, I was doing... When I, when I was really getting into it, um, when Fox Social Media contacted me and said, can you help us with this campaign? We're doing 201 Days of the X-Files. We want fans to watch the, the show one episode a day leading up to the premiere of, of the new season 10. 
could you do art for us every day? And I, <laughs> and, uh, I said, yes. They're like, we're going to start next week. Okay. So it was one of those things where, okay, I, this is a really great opportunity. Um, every cell in my body is saying, you probably can't do this, JJ, but you have to take the opportunity when it comes because it's not going to come again if you pass it up. So I hunkered down. I uh, opened Excel. I put every episode of the X-Files in there. And I said, how many of these am I going to have to do a day to keep up? And so at the, at the height of the project, I was doing three posters a day, uh, start to finish. And um, I'm, a, I'm a big um, advocate for working hard, but not working long, especially when it comes to um, like a single piece of art you could spend a lifetime on. And at a certain point, you just have to sit back and say, okay, this is done. And this was a really great way for that to happen because, yeah, it's got to be done because it's got it's to be posted tomorrow. Um, but over that process, I mean, it's, it can be hard to, to stay motivated when you have this huge mountain of work ahead of you. I was really fortunate that I loved the work that I was doing, but even work that you love is work and you need to find, you know, hours in the day. I was working full time when this happened. I hadn't transitioned to being a full time artist. So I was working 40 hours a week. Um, I was a librarian. Um, so I was working with teens and youth. I was planning programming. Um, some of those posters I would do on my 30 minute lunch break um, just because I needed to carve out the time to make it happen and I didn't want to miss the opportunity. Um, and so some of the posters really designed themselves in my mind and some, my, my wife will tell you, like I was sitting there trying to figure out how to do a gender bender poster for like a week. <laughs> I was like, how do I, how do I handle this episode now? Um, but you find it. And, um, and I was pleased that, you know, the designs that, that I found worked, or at least worked well enough for the time. And as we've been releasing them commercially as prints, I'll go back and I'll give them a facelift um, just so that I'm a little happier with them. And, but it, yeah, it, it was, that was a wacky time. Um, so the, the, the challenge was time at that point. And, there's lots of other challenges, but <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. Come on down. I'm curious if the ones, the posters that you worked on very quickly and had to do, like, you know, on a lunch break or something like that, were different in your mind in terms of how they worked out. And I guess what I'm, what I'm asking is, are the ones that kind of came to you more quickly the ones that you would also have as your favorites or the ones you find most authentic? Or would you say that the ones that took more effort were more of the authentic ones? That's a really great question. It's a mix. Um, the, the ones that come easy, I like because they come easy. <laughs> um, but when, even, even if it's a concept that took a while to get there, sometimes there's a really cool discovery process. And I'm, I'm, this is in writing as well. Um, I'll, I'll go into, I, I start all of my designs as like a, like a comp, like a little thumbnail, something that I scribble out on a piece of paper. And that's mostly just to see if the design that's in my head actually works, if it's physical, because sometimes it doesn't. Um, and, uh, you know, after that, it, there's, a, there's a real journey in terms of that little sketch and then moving it to the final version. And a lot of that has to do with color. Um, and so usually I'll make a lot of color discoveries along the way. And if you know my work, you know, sometimes I'll use lots of different, like really saturated colors because I really love um, when these images pop. Um, and so, yeah, some of it, even if it's a hard, if it's a hard design to come up with, I really like the journey of getting to that final version. But some of those, like even the ones that I was working on, like during a lunch break, were I'm really happy with. Like Squeeze, the, my poster for Squeeze, 30 minute lunch break. Um, so, and, and it just worked and it, it came together and I was like, and even when we did the set with that poster and I was like, I, I'm happy with this, this is good. This got from here to here without too much anxiety. So yeah, if that answers your question. It does, thank you. Okay. So, oh, do you have a question? Yeah. Two questions. Awesome. What's your name? Uh, Clarice. And uh, I have a total Hello, plus Clarice. question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a geek convention, so I figured it was coming. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I have a total fluff question. Uh, basically, I'm wondering, like, what is your favorite episode? And if you can't narrow it down that far, what's your favorite era of the X-Files? Oh, I... I think season three, season four, yes. like that era, for sure. I mean, it's watching like it first run, right but watching it first run was really something else. To feel that 
the fran to feel that the X Files was gaining this steam, and you could feel this was no longer for people who had nothing else to do on Friday night, and it moved to Sunday night. Um, I, I, you know, my favorite episodes, I, I mean, I have a bunch like other people, right? I think the host early on was a big one, Colony and Endgame being the, t uh, uh, Talitha Kumi, the season three finale I love mm -hmm. um, because it ends with Mulder and Mr. X in this brutal parking lot fight that blew my mind when I was a kid. Um, but there's so many. I mean, Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man, you can go down the, all the Vince Villian episodes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you ready for a hot take? Um, I during the original run, some of my favorite um, episodes watching live, and maybe it was the AJ was, was a lot of season eight. Um, because That's a hot take. It's a hot take, right? <laughs> um, and I guess the reason was it felt like that the world had expanded a little bit in that season and that nothing was off the table. I mean, when, when Mulder's not there, it's like, well, what's going to happen next? You know, And the show went in such interesting directions. It's not my favorite season but I have a lot of really great memories of watching that live. I think uh, seasons three through five are probably the strongest of the show. Um, and I like season six. Um, you see a shift when the show moves from Vancouver to California. Um, and, some, and some of that is good, and, and, but some, you know, I kind of just miss those really dark, cloudy, misty spooky. Vancouver forests. Um, but in terms of favorite episodes, I really like Humbug yes. uh, because I feel like that episode set a new tone for the series mm -hmm. that they would explore throughout. Um, and part of what I really liked about working on the posters specifically for the X-Files is that there are so many different genres within the show. I mean, it's a sci-fi show. There's action in it, but they can do parody, they can do comedy, they can do suspense. Um, it's, it's a show that really is flexible and can jump from genre to genre. And I feel like Humbug is such a really good example of how the show cannot take itself seriously, but still be seen as a serious television show, if that makes sense. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. All right, so we have one more final question. Come on down. What's your name? Martin. Uh, so, um, two-part question. Did you ever watch the uh, show Fringe? And if you did, uh, what did you think of it in relation to the X-Files? Um, I, honestly, I didn't watch Fringe regularly, so I can't actually speak to that. Um, I liked the few episodes I saw. I know something about the mythology, but I actually can't, uh, I, I haven't seen the whole thing at all, so I can't actually give you the answer you might be looking for. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've seen Fringe. There you go. Um, <laughs> oh, let me tell you about Fringe. Fringe, Fringe, Fringe. Um, I, I, I really like Fringe. Um, I have the Blu-ray set at home. Um, I, when I first started watching Fringe, I was like, well, this show wouldn't exist without the X-Files. Sure. Um, and what I thought was interesting about Fringe was, it, it's almost like, um, you know, when the X-Files premiered, serialized television wasn't really a thing. And the X-Files did a lot to help make it a thing. But imagine the X-Files slightly tweaked in the middle of serialized television and you've got this epic game plan throughout the run that's being executed episode to episode. So it was exciting to see a show that seemed to have the long game already figured out. And I think that my favorite thing about the show beyond the writing is the performances. I think yeah. that there's really great casting, especially John Noble, who's amazing. He's yeah, really great. Exactly. So I, I do, I, I would do posters for that show. Mm -hmm. I would totally do posters for Fringe. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a great show. And now you're going to say, I hate Fringe, and here's why. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So before we have to wrap this up, any final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank, exactly. I, I just want to thank everybody. Um, you know, I think we both do a fair amount of conventions, and um, some of them are really big, mm -hmm. and some of them are, are small. But it's really cool to go to a convention that represents a really specific community of yeah, fans. Yeah, it's the first X-Files convention I've done. Yeah, we both yeah. missed last year, I guess. Yeah. And, and I was I was doing another convention on the same weekend, so I was really mad about that. Um, but I'm really glad that I was able to make it out this year. And this is such a great, vibrant, um, 
like, giving fandom. And I owe a lot to this fandom. So I just thank everybody for being so supportive and nice to me and not making fun of my art. Um, that's really great. Um, and so it's, it's just really great to be, to be a part of this community. And events like this are so wonderful because all the, all the people whose words you see on the internet all the time, you can actually match them to a face and a voice. And it's just, it's, a, it's really special. So I just want to thank everybody. It's great to see old friends. I've seen a bunch of you folks uh, over the years at different shows. Um, I love when people tell me I met you when and I remember when. Hopefully I remember when. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's great to meet new friends wherever you go. It's been, uh, one of the most rewarding um, aspects of my career, frankly, is being able to be this, you know, however big or small, this little ambassador for the X-Files that I get to interact uh, with some of the best fans I've ever met. So, thank you. That was the last thing I had to say. Well, awesome. So, can we get one more big round of applause for JJ Leno and Joe Harris?